Well, I succeeded in making my garage floor warmer. Now I'm headed off to a place where the garage floors probably don't get cold in the first place, Yuma, Arizona. Now Candace Kirk is a crafter and she wants to build a work table. I think I'll give her a hand. Now promoting the beauty of Yuma is what Candace does for a living. She works for the Convention and Visitors Bureau. She also likes to create beautiful things with her arts and crafts projects. However, Candace has outgrown her workbench. So today, the two of us are building a bigger and better craft table. Hi! Hi. How are you? Well, very good. Do you greet all strangers like this? No, just you. Oh, well. Because you're special. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. I gotta tell you, it just feels like creativity is kind of oozing out of the walls here. Look at all these great materials. So, this is where you're working now? Right. Right. It, I'm working here and it's not very good for me because I have to get up and go get something because I don't have bins or anything to put my supplies in. So, um, to so keep it a little bit So you want it close. Clean. I want it right. close. You probably want a little bit more work area maybe? I'd like Larger more work area. area with a nicer top. Our plan is to purchase four kitchen cabinets at the local home improvement center and use them as the base for our work table. The top we'll build from scratch. So here, grab your screwdriver. Candace's backyard provides a stunning backdrop for our project. We start by assembling the four cabinets following the instructions that come with them. That is pretty easy. Yeah? Isn't this clever? Yeah. I'm sure you're experienced with glue. <laughs> yes. You're someone who's at home with the tools. Yep. Okay, bring it up. There. Okay. So let's just close that. Right. We managed to put each of the cabinets together in less than a half hour, then get ready to start on the tabletop. Okay, Candace, this is what we're going to make the top of your craft table out of. Okay. It's called MDF, medium density fiberboard. It's a particle board, but it's very dense. Mm -hmm. You know, and we could just use this as is, but you use a lot of paints and stuff, so I'm thinking about, yeah, let's do something that's going to be a little bit easier to keep clean. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with this. Now, around the edge of this, I want to put a piece of wooden trim on. Oh, okay. So, first thing I want to do is add some strips. I've got them cut right here. These strips we're gluing along the edge will stiffen the top and help prevent sagging. They'll also create a surface to which we'll glue trim strips later on. Turn it over, put it kind of on the edge, and I want to kind of swish this back and forth a little bit. That'll distribute oh, like the glue. Oh, okay. okay. Next, Candace uses a nail gun to secure the strips in place until the glue dries. You enjoying this? Yeah, I like this. Okay, so we'll flip this over. Okay. Put the bottom side down like that. Okay, now let's grab, this is our plastic laminate right here. Okay, that's the good side. We'll put that face down. Face down, okay. Right on top here now. Okay, now we're going to put this on with something called contact adhesive. So we'll apply it first to the back of this. Okay. Then we'll take this off and then we'll apply it to that uh, particle board. Okay. Okay? Okay. This is contact cement. A short nap paint roller is one of the fastest and easiest ways to apply contact cement to large surfaces like this. Covered and smooth, that's it. And as long as we don't forget to turn around and enjoy the scenery every once in a while. Contact cement bonds to itself. So we also nice apply it to the fiber board. Here, all the way to the end. There okay. you go. Since the fiber board is highly absorbent, we roll on a second coat. As it dries, the adhesive goes from white to clear. Okay, this is dry. One way I test this is with the back of my hand. You can see this little stick of the hairs oh. in the back of your hand. It's just kind of a little bit rubbery now. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, Candace, take these boards that I've got over there, and I want to lay these on top. See, these won't stick because it's dry. Oh, okay. There you go. I'm put this one over there. Do it. Okay. Now we're going to grab our high pressure laminate. Now we're going to turn this over now. Okay. And this that's the side that has the adhesive on it. We lay it right up on top of the boards. And what the boards do is they keep this from coming in contact with that particle board underneath. By keeping the two glue surfaces from touching each other, we can easily move the plastic laminate so that it's centered over the particle board. Now, when we lay this down, 
Mm -hmm. And those two surfaces come into contact with each other. This is stuck. Once the laminate is in position, we slide the boards out one by one and use a pressure roller to press the surfaces firmly in contact with each other. Rolling from the center to the edge forces out any air bubbles. Now we're ready to trim off the excess laminate. This is a laminate trimmer. Its sole purpose in life is to do exactly what we're going to do right now, and that is to trim off the excess plastic laminate that's overhanging. If you look right here, there's a cutting bit, like you'd see in a router, mm -hmm. and then right here, a bearing. Now this bearing is going to roll along the edge and of the MDF okay. right here. Mm -hmm. That's going to keep us from cutting in too deeply, give us a completely flush cut. The laminate trimmer spins at very high speeds and can throw off small chips or particles. So we've put on face shields for protection. The trick to using this tool is to keep the base flat and move at a slow, even pace. You did a really nice job on this. Oh, thank very you. nice thank job. You. Um, now we've got to, we want to do something with this edge right here. We could have put the same laminate on the side here, but I thought this would be kind of nice. This is just a piece of oak, mm -hmm. which will go right on here. And we're just going to nail this on. So, so now, on the end of this piece of wood and on the end of this piece, we've cut a miter, which mm -hmm. is a 45 degree angle cut. What that's going to do is give us a nice clean look when these two go together like that. Oh, yeah. And there's no end grain showing. This is just face gray now, wrapped all the way around. That's mm -hmm. the advantage or beauty of a miter cut. With the edging on, it's time to begin assembling our table base. The base will have two ends, each made up of a pair of cabinets placed back to back. We'll attach the backs together with screws. Next, we connect the two ends together with one by fours called stringers. These will also give the top some added support. Good. Okay. Well, all three stringers are in place. I say we go get the top. All right. All right. Let's do it. And here we go. It should get this stuff right in place now. There we go. Oh, that looks nice, huh? Oh yeah. That gonna be a good Perfect. height for you. Come around here. Good working yeah, height? Yeah, because I'll have my stool and it'll be just perfect. Okay. Candace slides the drawers into the cabinets, and the project is complete. There you go. Well, you have got tons of storage space here, including yeah. this nice area under here where you can stack boxes. Oh, I, love I figure it. you can probably do 12 or 15 of those big plastic boxes here. Great work spot. How, did, how do you like it? I love it. Yeah? I just, yeah, it's better than what I thought of. Come you know? on. It is. I love it. I like all the storage and I like the big countertop. Customized tables like this can make any craft or hobby just that much more enjoyable by offering plenty of storage and ample workspace. Whether your pastime is model airplanes, sewing, or creating Arizona mistletoe. For a real hot kiss. It's a pepper. <laughs> right. Hey, I'd like to make one of these. Okay. Now building this craft table was fun, but putting it to use is going to be even better.